Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. Um, in my last video I promised you some more uh, videos on uh, repairing old TVs. Now I'm quite excited about this because this particular TV we've got here, the last time I saw one of these, in fact the last time I repaired one of these, must be 40 years ago. So let's just take a quick look, I'll get up and we'll move the camera about and then uh, we'll go and have a look for the service manual. So, have you any idea what it is? It's a Sharp, um, it's a C1831H. Um, now I'm hoping the date's going to be on the service manual. Um, it looks a little bit rough. Um, you can see how the dirty the leads is. Um, there's two knobs missing off the side, which is a bit of a shame. Um, there's a carrying handle there, although it absolutely weighs a ton. Um, chipboard cabinet with like a fabloni cover on. Um, let's turn it round and have a look at the back. Um, the clicky tuner still seems to work, but the fine tuning in the middle uh, seized up. Now this is the one that Sharp called the Lintron. So um, let's just have a quick look round the back, then we'll go and have a look for the service manual. That's if I can find it, because it's been such a long time ago. Um, and see where we go from there. Right, so that's the uh, the back view of the set. Carrying handle on each side. Black plastic back. Uh, red cutout button there, like the Thorn 3500s used to have. Uh, that's the model there, Sharp. 1831H. So um, we'll take the back off in a minute. Let's just um, see if we can find the service manual first and, and come back to it in a bit. Right, so all these filing cabinets are full of service manuals. Uh, from memory, it's probably going to be in this one. Um, but this is going to take quite a long time to look. So we'll come back in a bit or come back tomorrow. Right everybody, so I've found the service manual. Um, now I've had a look at this and there is no date on it. Um, but what might give you a clue is the address of Sharp Electronics, which seems to predate um, when I did my training at Sharp Electronics in Newton Heath. Um, so, uh, there's no date there. I would put this probably of the mid 1970s um, but somebody might remember um, let's just have a quick turnover that's all the convergent settings um, now I think all these are hand wired boards which is going to make it a nightmare so this might not be a rest well it, no it definitely won't be a restoration video I just don't have the time it might be a just get it going stick it on YouTube uh, project this so let's turn over to circuit diagram. Um, get that over there. Right, that's the circuit diagram. So we'll just have a quick look. Um, the mains, the power supply seems to come from a transformer um, feeding linear regulators. Um, the line output stage is a thyristor line output stage, a bit like the Normende 3787. Uh, there's another thyristor there. Um, as you can see, it's full of chips you've never heard of, which I've probably got in stock anyway. Um, in fact, I've just had a look at, uh, see what Sharp did. They had a habit of marking up ordinary chips with a funny number on, so you paid a premium price when you got it from Sharp. Um, but the good thing about it is, they did come in a nice little red box when they got them from Sharp. Um, and usually when you open the box up, it was like a common garden chip inside. Uh, now, I don't know who remembers uh, Willow Vale Electronics. They were just down the road from Sharp when they were at Newton Heath. Um, they were the main Sharp uh, dealers for parts. So, um, hmm. I think the best thing to do now is to uh, just get the back off. And uh, this has come from a friend of mine that used to mend TVs a long, long time ago. Um, so um, there might be parts missing, or in fact there is a sticker on top. If we turn that round, and it says on the sticker... What does it say on the sticker? Potentiometer with switch, 2K for sharp model C1831. So... 
that seems to tie in with the missing buttons there because these sets had two on and off switches they had one there or is it that one well I think one of these pulls out and clicks um, and they also had one on the side as well uh, let's see what it says there mains on and off and colour so um, let's just get the back off and have a quick look inside first right well that's the back off and uh, just as i remembered it's all hand wired so it's going to make an absolute nightmare to do anything on this um that's the tube it's a sharp 470 efb 22 uh, that's the convergence panel there tuner right down there um three transistors on there uh, that appears to be the line output panel down there What's that there? Oh focus control there and um, Yeah, what do we have down here load of wire hanging down? Right, so we can safely assume that the uh, reservoir capacity is no good in it because it's hanging off a piece of wire and that's obviously that's a lot more modern one than the telly so um, oh and what's that down there ah now that's a bonus that's the knobs off the side that are missing and also a big metal clamp for clamping the capacitor on so I presume the original one's missing but yeah that's the two knobs off the side right let's have a look what the problem is then so the board's out um, and straight away you can see what the problem is it ties in with the sticker on the top that's the back of the on and off switch and um, that is the that is the colour control. So the colour control is combined with the on and off switch. Right, so um, finding one of them not going to be easy. I might have one, but um, as it's only the colour control, we might be able to just patch something in just to try this set. Um, that's obviously got to go. I'll have to find where that's that's connected up. Let me just get a torch. Right, it's got the torch now. As you can see, very very dusty down there. That could well, I don't know what that is. Is it the delay line? Yeah, right at the back. That's the uh, delay line. And um, yeah, all hand wired. Very complex absolutely covered in dust question is will this have a go again well we're going to have to uh, take the chassis out make sure there's nothing else missing and then uh, see if we can get a control and power it up and see what happens right so I've looked all through all my, my old stock and I found one exactly the right one um, as you can see it's got the uh, the control there and the switch on the back and the reason it's got to be the right one is because it does the mains on and off and the colour um, so you've got to have a pull on and off let me just see if I can show you you pull it out front otherwise if you had one that clicked off when you turned it you'd have to readjust the colour every time you turned it on and off so that is exactly the right one um, but unfortunately um this is 10k and the one in the set's 2k um, now that's not a big deal because um when i look at the manual there is a couple of resistors in series with it so i could just delete them and fit this um but rather than um just use this brand new switch for the moment i think the plan is to just short this out and perhaps put um, a little preset or uh, yeah short this out and just join these two together um, to give maximum color 
um, maybe even leave that in for now and uh, let's just plug it in see what happens first before we waste this just in case the rest of the set's no good or there's something else gone that I haven't got right so as you can see I've just shorted out the switch element with a couple of bits of wire and I've realized um, we can actually control the color uh, with just a crocodile clip by just putting it on different places on the track um, so that should be okay as a quick test so all I've got to do now is figure out how we get this other switch going because it seems to seize up a bit yeah the actual bottom one is pull on and off and volume so I'm gonna to have to put a bit of cleaner in there because when you pull it to switch it on uh, the knob comes off so I'll just give that a quick squirt and then uh, then we'll put the knob back on see where we go in fact I can see the problem there it's not the actual the, the knob that's stiff uh, the switch that's stiff there's a crack in the plastic so we're gonna to have to be careful with that I think I'll leave that off for now and just um, pull it out with a pair of pliers because we don't want to break that and never going to replace that right guys and girls this is it the big switch on um, I've checked across the plug we do have continuity um, I'm running from an isolation transformer and I'm going to uh, plug it in and switch it on here on my bench so there we go it's plugged in get ready to stand back a bit and I'll just flick the switch here three two one oh and I can hear a hissing noise and I think the trip on the back's just tripped out so let's stop the camera and take a look that didn't last long did it right I've reset the trip let's just try it again Oh, and it's tripped out again right I'm gonna to have to stop and take a look at it right so plan B is to take the plug off um, reset the trip and uh, I'm going to run it through uh, a 60 watt bulb this time um, which is what I should have done in the first place let's see what happens now Hang on. Yep, let me stand back again Uh, yeah the bulbs look very bright so we do have a big problem there right okay guys I'm gonna to have to stop the camera and take a look at this and come back to it later or another day now earlier on in the video um, I said this set appeared to be fed from a transformer well now I've studied the diagram it isn't this transformer I thought was feeding the set is actually the heater transformer um, because if we trace that there it goes up to the um, goes up to here the CRT heater and also this little transformer is powering two incandescent light bulbs um, that light up this display on the front um, so I got that wrong the regulation seems to be carried out in the thyrus to line output stage um, but if we look here it is full of linear regulators 245 in um, 171 out um, so a lot of this circuitry is very primitive so now the plan is I can't see what the problem is now the plan is to run it up slowly through a vary I can see what happens right so I've got the chassis down there the back um, that appears to be part of the power supply it's certainly the mains input on here and um, I can smell a smell like burnt electrolyte so I would imagine a capacitor's pot would not been reformed um, but if you look a lot at, if you look at a lot of these caps anyway they look very very much worse for wear um, so whether we're actually going to get this set going or not um, because it looks like a very time consuming job but I have given it a hoover out there so you can have a quick look inside um, that's the red green blue output transistors and you can see what sharp do they use the TO66 uh, and they've actually soldered um, the connection straight to the top of the transistor rather than using a nut and bolt um, and if we move over to here 
um, you can see it there look the red wires just sold us straight to the collector so hmm I'm going to do a little bit more work on this and uh, I might have to uh, leave it and do something else and come back to it um, but you can see the uh, how complex it is inside because it's all hand wired so whether this will ever go again or not or it might be uh, a project for uh, my retirement who knows so let's just stop the camera and I'll just do a little bit more work on it right so here's the progress so far um, in the bag with the knobs and the two wing nuts hold this panel on here uh, was the capacitor clamp that holds that cap in there so what I've done I've decided to take this modification out and uh, I've tested the original cap and uh, there's nothing actually wrong with that so I fitted that back in and uh, let's just take a quick look now the chassis is all out because we've got uh, actually a, a better view of the inside now I'll give it a bit of a hoover um, it's not perfect but it's uh, it's clean enough to see everything so now we've just got to uh, start looking for the problem with it right so that there appears to be the line scan thyristor and this is the line oscillator so the first thing we need to do I think is check that capacitor there which smooths the supply to the line oscillator uh, which very unusually, um, I mean it's marked 20 odd volts in here so it's probably a 23, 24 volt rail very unusually it seems to be rectified here um, but it actually comes from um, this little low voltage transformer there so I think the first thing we're going to do is to locate um, that capacitor there on the, um, the line oscillator supply rail and also that one there um, which seemed to be on the main board so it's going to take quite a while to find them right so I've checked out both them two caps and they're all right uh, but if you remember I said there was like a smell of burning electrolyte uh, now look what I found underneath the chassis get the torch on it and you see there, there's a capacitor that's split and the top of it's bulging so that'll definitely need changing um, now because it's off the board um, there's got to be no circuit references to it but it's a 4.7 at 350 volt and it's near a thousand at 50 so if we look at the diagram here we go so there we've got a thousand at 50 that's off the main board and if we follow it through it also goes to a 4.7 at 350 volt so I think that's the one um, where the smell of burning electrolyte is coming from and it's definitely um, part of the supply here to the line oscillator um, but it'd be interesting to know what the positive end's actually connected to. So I'm going to switch the camera off and just have a good look at that and then I'll change it. So it's point L wherever that goes, like a rat's, rat's nest looking for things in here. Right, so that's the supply rail there for the line oscillator. Um, I followed that point L back and it goes over to... Um, let's have a look oh here we go point L there it goes straight to that capacitor that was in that can that somebody's bridged over so I wonder if somebody's been looking for this fault before um, but you've got your two caps there and an inductor in the middle an LC filter so this is just rectified mains here um, and that goes to that cap which is um, which seems to have uh, burnt up so let's take that out and uh, swap that and then see what happens right so is that the old we've made some progress now that's the old cap um, now it, it appears to be some sort of kickstart capacitor 
um, and it's actually very leaky um, so what it'll be doing there'll be um, too much voltage here to the line oscillator but I find it strange that you need a kickstart capacitor um, when the line out oscillator supply actually comes from a little mains transformer but let's have a look now at the result um, I've got the variac set to 100% now we're not using that anymore flick it on at the mains here and you can hear the sounds come up And look at that, we've got a very defocused raster, but the sets come on. Um, I don't know if you can see there, but the, um, the two incandescent dial lamps are lit because we've got a tuning scale. And it seems to be stuck on about channel 38. So we do have a raster, it's very, very out of focus. If I move around the back, you can see there the heaters are lit up. That's the two uh, MES bulbs for the dial light. Yeah, so we're making progress. So I think the thing to do now is um, I'll just play with the focus control and see what happens, see if we can focus that in. Or uh, it could be that the, um, the focus spark gap is leaking because this came out of the guy's cellar. So uh, let me just stop the camera and twist the focus. Right, so the focus control, although it's working, doesn't do a lot. Um, there's a control on the front here, oh contrast, um, as you can see the contrast control works, uh, we do have some sort of um, distortion there, pin cushion distortion but we'll come to that later, I'm not bothered about that at the moment, um, it's the focus control that's a big problem, um, so have a look on the diagram here, uh, the focus control, the focus supply seems to come straight from the doubler um, so if it's a problem with that because there is an internal resistor of 132 megs with stuff um, there's also another resistor there 28 meg could be a problem changing that um, but if we follow the focus control up to the tube base um, I'm hoping that it's just that spark gap there that's leaking um, so I'm going to see if we can find a way of disconnecting that because um, quite often when a setter got damp you could get leakage across there and that would cause this exact fault. So let's, uh, let's move on to that now we've got the screen lit up. So the spark gap for the focus control isn't built into the tube base like I would have expected um, and also there's a, a smoothing capacitor there for the focus control so that's the focus control smoothing capacitor and that's the spark gap what I'm going to do is just disconnect them two and see what happens in fact if you look there's no uh, spark gaps built into here they're all um, separate on the PCB um, if you remember on later TVs, all these were actually built in to uh, um, like a separate ring round here. So let's just disconnect that and that and see what happens. Right, well I've disconnected the uh, focus spark gap and the capacitor and the voltage still hasn't come up. Uh, we've only got about 2 kV on the electrostatic uh, focus electrode which is bad news because if we look at the data sheet for the tube which was uh, made in 1974 according to the data sheet uh, we need bef between 4200 and 5000 volt on the focus electrode and we've only got two so now we have a big problem because if we look at the voltage multiplier uh, the focus electrode is tapped from this 132 mega resistor um, straight from the output to the anode cavity um, and what I'm just going to do is disconnect that 28 meg and uh, see how much it rises there but it looks like that 132 meg resistor has risen in value 
Um, now that is a big problem because that is built inside the voltage multiplier. Um, now there's no reason why we couldn't attach one on the outside, um, but because it's carrying a high voltage it's quite dangerous. But I'm just going to disconnect that first, that 28 meg, and see what happens. Right, okay, so we're not out of the woods yet, but I have just discovered something, which is quite a bonus actually. That 132 meg resistor, it's actually showing part of the voltage multiplier like it's built inside. Um, but if we go over here, that's the voltage multiplier, that's the EHT output. If we look down here, this great big tube with a terminal on the bottom actually contains the 132 meg resistor. So if that was faulty, uh, we are going to be able to replace that with something. But um, I've just disconnected now the output from the 132 meg resistor. It's not connected to anything now. So let's just recheck what voltage we've got now, bearing in mind we only had 2 kV before. Right, so that's a bonus now. We've just got over 10 kV now with the uh, focus control disconnected. Right, so I've just drawn the, the circuit down on this piece of paper out of the tally just to make it a bit bigger so it's easier to follow. Um, so I've done some more tests and I've actually found the problem is this 132 meg resistor has gone high in value. Um, I can measure it because I can get into the anode cavity and I can also measure... Um, the output that goes to the tube base so we've got two convenient points um, present to measure that resistor now i've measured this and it actually comes out at over 200 megs um, now if you're wondering how you measure such a high value resistor i've got a little demonstration set up here uh, you just need an insulation tester at 500 volts this will measure up to 200 megs so i've got an old focus control connected here um, let's just turn this on So we're measuring end to end and see what value that is so when I press this button So the value of that focus control is 79 megs um, now when I do the same test on here between there and there um, It's actually over ranging 200 megs. So that resistor has gone high in value um, So now we're into the modification territory because there's no chance of um, getting another EHT multiplier. And I could try and get that out. I could destroy the, the, the tube that, that that's in and get it out. But we're going to try a different way. Right, so there's, there's only two reasonable options I can see. Um, we can either tap into this final anode cavity wire and take a tapping off it, take a wire off it and redesign the focus circuit. Um, which I have done before in the 1980s actually, um, I'll show you in a minute, or what we can do is we can, because we need more voltage here, what we can do is we can alter the balance of this potential divider um, so it's not as close to ground and we get more voltage coming out here. So the decision I've taken is to alter the balance of this potential divider rather than tap into the EHT lead uh, to get a supply to redesign the circuit. Now, as I told you, I've done that back in the 1980s. Um, I actually did it with a Hitachi CNP190 chassis. And uh, what it was, it was a TV and the um, one of the heaters wasn't lit, so we only had two colours, so it needed a new tube. Now, the only tube I've got was one for a Thorn 8500. Um, but the difference was, although it was electrically the same and it fitted, um, the, the tube in the Thorn 8500, that ran from a high potential focus voltage, whereas the Tachi CMP190 only had a very low uh, focus potential, probably, I can't remember now, probably four or 500 volts. So what I did, um, that's uh, a picture, because I kept a lot of uh, pictures of modifications I've done, that's the CMP190 and if you look here we've actually got down at the bottom um, a focus control um, and now what I did is I, I tapped into the HT lead, I redesigned the focus circuit 
and that's why it's got a control there so um, if you've ever seen a CNP 190 with a focus control there it's because it's got a Thorn 8500 tube in so back to the sharp TV um, so we know that resistor there has risen in value um, and um, we've got a low voltage here of about 2 kV when we need 4.5 to 5 kV so what we're going to do is we're going to redress the balance of this potential divider because we need more voltage there and the simple way to do it is to just insert another resistor here like so um, now putting a resistor there it won't be as close to earth which means the voltage at this point here will rise so what I've been doing I've been doing some experiments and I fitted here a 66 mega ohm resistor so let's just take a look at that first right well I haven't actually got a 66 meg uh, these are two 33 megs in series on these crocodiles and I've also just temporarily taken out the focus control so what we're going to do now is switch on and see what focus potential we've got now right so as you can see now with an extra 66 megs of resistance in the earthy end of the potential divider uh, we've actually got now around just over 4 kV um, so we need to do a little bit more experimenting with the resistor values but we've already doubled the focus potential uh, by adding two, um, 166 mega resistor or 233s whichever way you want to put it and I don't know if it shows up on the camera but the picture now is considerably sharper than it was before so I just need to do some experiments and um, I think probably the easiest thing to do to find the right value we need um, is just to use one of these um, these uh, focus controls and uh, play about with that so uh, okay let's come back in a minute but we're getting there right so it's looking good um, a little bit more experimentation is required to find the optimum value for the a resistor to insert uh, but here we're running about 4200 volts now <clears throat> and I do have pretty sharp focus I don't know if you can see it on the camera so we're looking about 4200 give or take a little bit to bring this into a pin sharp focus um, now I don't want to make this video too long um, because I'm going to run out of space on my camera um, so what I think I'll do is I'll leave all these bits patched in um, the next thing I'm going to do now is take out the rotary tuner which is just like it's like a 405 tuner that clicks around but it's all mechanical and it's altering this um, very cap tuner so there's only four screws to take out I'm going to take that out first and um, clean all that up uh, unseize it with some WD-40 and uh, then we'll see where we go from there right so we've still got this pin cushion distortion here but I'm not bothered about that at the moment I'm, I'm probably going to make this video into a part two let's just get the setup and running so uh, let's turn it off um, I've cleaned all this up now um, the, the uh, one of the stickers has fallen off and I haven't got the other one um, you can see the operation of the click round tuner and also I've lubricated the cogs in the middle so when you push it in it operates the AFC defeat micro switch and then we can fine tune it by turning the middle so let's just see that lit up first now it's all cleaned up there we go and we've got uh, a reasonably sharp focus pitch it's not quite needs a little bit more um, experimentation yet but we're getting there right so let's get this connected to a skybox right so as you can see um, I've just give it a quick clean uh, there's 50 years of dirt on it's looking good um, now there's just one other thing to mention before we turn it on again um, and I missed this out in one of my last videos when you're dealing with old sets like this that have a live chassis you must connect 
um, anything to it via the aerial isolation socket. Um, this has capacitors in that isolates the uh, the live chassis from the TV aerial. Um, now I'm going to plug a skybox in here. Now this doesn't matter to me because all my benches are running off isolation transformers. Uh, but for anybody wanting to try this at home, um, you must connect through um, the isolator unit into the tuner. So right, let's just get a skybox connected to this. And uh, I've not cleaned the side yet. You can see that's very dirty, but the front's looking nice. And you can see on the top where I've just given it a quick clean. Um, let's uh, plug it in, get it on skybox and have a look at it. Right, here we go guys and girls, hit the power. That's a bit crackly still, I haven't done anything with that yet. Right, let's get something else in the skybox. Right, so we'll try the colour bars first. Yeah, absolutely fine colour. Let's try adjusting the colour control with my crocodile clip. Yeah, that's full saturation. Um, contrast control there. What a sharp, bright picture that is. Right, let's put, uh, as you can see, we've still got the um, pin cushion distortion, uh, but I'm not worried about that yet. Let's get, um, let's get a live picture on it. Perhaps a little less colour. Why wouldn't knock that off a racetrack? No. 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 And they're not quite good, you still not. Yeah, they're both very outgoing, particularly Petra. She's very matriarchal. Wow, well, look at that. Head elephant. And well, actually, Carl, quiet. Now, I've actually looked at the radio and TV servicing books, and they this appears in the 1977 book. Um, the tube was manufactured by Toshiba in 1975, so I would imagine this dates from 75 to 77. Um, but yeah, what a telly! And we've only put one brand new capacitor in it. Um, now, I would imagine this pin cushion distortion is down to some faulty capacitors, um, but I think. What we're going to do is make this into a part two video. I'll go over it, I'll go over it. Okay, competitive. Well, there's one more course to go with the chocolate puds baked. But as you can see, <laughs> what a bright picture that is. This is a winning dessert. This is. Um, I've still got the temporary uh, focusing arrangements in and um, I'm adjusting the colour with a crocodile clip i've not fitted the uh, new pot yet so uh, maybe we're going to make that into a part two video when you see it all finished all back together but what i tell you that is it must be 40 years the last time i saw one of those so let's just kill the power let's have another good look at it um it's a little bit cleaner than what it was. Sharp Lintron. 
Um, I think they called it Lintron, it was just another word for the Toshiba black stripe tube. Um, down there, made in Japan. Move to that side, sharp IC transistor. And there we go, so uh, keep your eye out for the part two, it might not be for a while yet because I've got other things to do. But um, if you like what you see and you like old TVs, then um, please subscribe to my channel because um, I've got some more old TVs yet. Because they're young, they might not have had as much practice with cooking, so maybe that might be a downfall. The young, the inexperienced at dinner parties, I think we'll give them the chance. How very kind of you. You know, I think we've been quite creative. All right, guys and girls, many thanks for watching my channel, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video then. Goodbye. But we like pate, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Pate's good.